in the middle of my university undergrad here in Manila in um, Ateneo so I finished the management economics course halfway through I kind of started to question what I would really be doing after I graduated because I guess the usual conservative route would have been work apply for a bank or a, a multinational but there was a particular subject in my last two years that really kind of pushed me towards the more entrepreneurial aspect of, of um, business. And I think that also kind of helped because in my family, pretty much everyone is entrepreneurial. So it was just a matter of finding what to be entrepreneurial about. And um, fashion was something that I always gravitated toward. I'd, always enjoyed the creation the creation aspect of it the production aspect of it so and growing up with um, my ama and my mom always being dressed up and pretty so of course that kind of helped me shift my attention towards doing something that um, they would benefit from i was very fortunate to, to have been allowed actually by my parents to to study at institute of marangoni in london and i think what london did for me was help me see that there was more to the world than the, I guess the confines of usual Manila life and I saw so many things so many beautiful cultural things got to meet so many people of different races different color and even their fashion styles and sensibilities were very different but in the melting pot of London that was where everything just happened to blend in together without really like blending in if that makes sense because you have so many different people and so many different interpretations of fashion that it's just so visual sometimes overwhelming and and um to me that was exciting um so when i returned of course the the idealistic part of me wanted to do um, ready to wear immediately um but what happened to me when i got back was the realities of it is starting a fashion business is very difficult no matter where you are in the world. So I had to really follow in what was um, what the people's sensibilities were here in Manila. And their sensibilities still really much rely on evening wear and formal wear pieces. So one of my cl clients, which actually became my first bride, um, had commissioned me to to do the pieces for the mom, so mother of the bride, mother of the groom. Um, she had already bought a ready-to-wear bridal piece, but unfortunately, the piece wasn't prepared well. So, given that we only had a week and hum and I would say around ten days, I I asked her if she she would risk you know, like letting me do the gown because I told her I don't want you to walk down the aisle hating what you're wearing just because you already bought it. Good thing she, she was trusting enough to, to give me that responsibility and suffice to say, it's still one of my favorite experiences. And following that, that was when all the brides really started to come in and from, from that experience with my first bread, I accidentally became a bridal designer and, and now, I think four years in, um, bridal wear and evening wear has really become my focus as a fashion label. I wouldn't say just exactly right now that I've made it, but I'm still working towards making it happen. <laughs> Because as a young designer, without really m any connections in the fashion industry locally, um, what I started to do was upload my portfolio in different de um, designer platforms. So I, th I believe it was one of those platforms that got me um, the invite to participate in the Mercedes-Benz Stylo Asia show. Um, because everyone else of the Philippine contingent were... Um, well, they were seasoned designers already and they already were in part of the, for example, the FDCP. So I was the only one who kind of came out of nowhere, appear, showed up in Malaysia with my family who went with me and like, hi, I'm a new one here. 
I felt very relieved <laughs> because my that was really my first fashion show and it was in a country that I had no resources to um, you know do go sees and do proper fittings. We only had a day prior to the show where we got to meet the models and even on the day of the show, a few didn't show up for me. So it was really scrambling for girls to you know just walk out in, in my pieces and so when they were finally out, I really felt, you know, I felt very happy, a little numb, but very, very relieved that, you know, finally my, all the work, the, all the hard work paid off. Yes, Metro Wear Lux here in Manila. So in that uh, show, it was a, I think we were five or six uh, all female designers and um, I think I believe that was the year also of that whole female empowerment year so we were kind of in sync with the theme and I opened for the other designers as the new one well they say that the first designer sets the tone for for the show and I think um, it was good for me to do that because prior to that no one else has seen my, my, my work and um, it kind of injected like a youthfulness that I think Metro Magazine also wanted anyway. It felt really good actually to, to finally have people locally, clients and the family, alike, family and friends to see the show here locally because prior to that was the one in Malaysia. So only in Metro where was I able to, to see you know, more people that I value and how they reacted to the pieces and um, it was very, very humbling, actually, to, to get all that um, support from them and just coming to okay. see the show. So after Metroware, around the same time as Metroware, I was already being invited to um, participate in New York Fashion Week by a PR company that, um, with, uh, with the goal to find emerging Asian designers and, and bring them into the New York American slash American market. Luckily enough, um, I was able to do the two seasons there. So I did the fall winter 2016 and the spring summer 2017, which um, actually really, really worked for me because I got to show a New York Fashion Week. And I think that in itself is already such a big deal. And even when I arrived in New York, um, the my PR agent was telling me that, you know, even if you're from the US, you don't necessarily get this chance. So since I mean, just the fact that you're coming all the way from the Philippines to do this here, it's it's really such a big um, global step for you to to be here in this stage. As a fashion student, it was actually one of those things you and jot down in your fashion bucket list but you know sometimes the realities of coming home because I, I studied in London and then I, I came back home so when I first got back I think it kind of dampened those dreams a little bit but when I started getting those invites then it, I kind of realized that it doesn't actually really matter where you're from geographically as long as, again, you just put yourself out there, put your work out there, someone will find the value in your work and give you these opportunities. I'm definitely taking my career seriously, albeit it's very different, I would say, from, from my family's um, lifestyle but you know slowly it's just a matter of showing them that what they have equipped me with has helped me build this and make it bigger i suppose the good thing with my industry is i'm able to put out what i say um i don't say that i can do something and and um, come out with something that's less than what I've said. So I'm very um, straightforward with what I create. And I show them that, you know, if you trust me, your work, your piece will be really, really beautiful. And it'll fit you. It won't make you look old. It won't make you look, you know, 
big. And yes, I would rather let the pieces speak for me. Um, I'm not generally great at sales talk. I'd rather let the work be the sales talk in itself. And um, if people really value the things that I do, and, and I do have a lot of clients who, who trust me, it's, it's a much better feeling to just produce these pieces for these very special women. On my fourth year now, I really want to expand what I can do um, creatively. And I want to expand my, my range. So slowly, still continuing on with the bridal wear in the evening wear. I still, I still do want to get my foot into the re retail um, RTW door. So I've been, um, well, I think in the next two years, those plans will kind of come up. Um, and I guess that is the general challenge right now. How, do we, how does one design evolve? How do I evolve after doing so many things that generally takes 20 years to accomplish? And I've been able, I mean, I've been very, very lucky to have been able to do it in the last four years. So what do I do next now that I've done these things? And, and it's that, it's really trying to provide and leave a legacy of a label I'm really trying to improve my craft right now because my goal really is to hit Paris Fashion Week. Um, New York is very urban, it's very ready to wear, but um, Paris is where all the couture is. And I really, really want to, to someday be a part of that, just like what Michael Cinco has done in the last year. Um, I think just by the fact that he's been able to do that, to do an actual show, gives me better hope that, you know, younger designers like me can do that as well. And also, um, I'm actually part of a fashion exchange collective, and that includes Rajo Laurel, Dennis Lustico, Iverluski Aceron, and um, they were also able to, to participate in the trade shows last year. So that really gives me, that makes me optimistic that because they're kind of helping us groom ourselves to be globally competitive in the evening wear scene, that that is where I want to see myself in, in the next 10 years. I would give it 10 years. I would like the name Rosenthal T to, to last even when, you know, one day I'm gone. I want it to stand as a legitimate, fashion designers label, not just based in the Philippines, but known globally as well. To be successful doesn't necessarily always mean that people will understand what you want to do. Um, but if you believe and if you pray a lot, reflect on all those options, the pros and the cons of deciding to take certain steps, um, then you should go for it because as of now, youth is on our side. You don't want to take too long in deciding to pursue what you really, really want to do um, in your 40s or in your 50s. And I've encountered clients who've come to me saying, oh, they wish when they were younger that they actually took up fashion designing. But of course, different times, it was, a, it was very much tougher to, to be taken seriously in a creative industry. And I think even now, it's, still, it's very difficult for a lot of conservative families to, to allow their, their kids to take um, creative um, occupations. So if you have the will to, to take that harder path, but you see yourself kind of succeeding in it, then I, then I would say just go for it.